Affinity Photo continues to surprise me. There's always new features that I didn't realize that I could do with Affinity Photo. I've been using it since version one. It's now many, many years of using Affinity Photo, and now I find some new great feature. So first thing to do, go to the rectangle tool, and it could be any shape. I'm just using a rectangle, drag, and then press the arrow keys. Now that's nothing new there, it duplicates. So right arrow key, just press it, and it will create those. Press the down, and it will create those. So I'm gonna create about 20 odd rectangles. Now with those selected, still keeping them selected, what you can do, you can go to layer, and you can rasterize. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna rasterize them, put them all into pixel layers, so they all become pixels. Well, once you've done that, you can select them like that individually. You can select them, obviously using the move tool, just select one of those, and you can apply filters to it. So filters, and go down to apply image. So if you want to add a photo or something into a particular one of these shapes, just apply image. Now you can do it also when it's a shape as well, but this panel pops up, load source from file. Now, unfortunately, Affinity Photo does not allow with this filter for you to fill, say five or 10 squares at one go, so 10 layers. You can't seem to do that. And now there's a reason for saying that because I'm gonna be using that a little bit later. Load source from file. So load source from file, and I've got some Adobe stock images here. You could of course use and fill it with anything, create your own images. Just a blank file can be used as well. And so I'm just gonna go for, say this a guitarist here, click open. And now you can see, you can set the scale, etc. You don't have to set that, but I would prefer to do that. You can set that image. You can also manipulate it further with the equations, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna click apply at this point. So I've got this image here. Now I could do that with all of them. So you could build up very rapidly a really interesting image with all these different squares. But also what you can do is you can, for many of the filters, apply the effects to all of them. So you can do this. You can select all of them like that, all selected, and then go to the filters. And then go down here, you could go to blur. So Gaussian blur, you can blur it like that which is quite an interesting fact. And you can see so you can blur, create different sort of grid-like designs there. I'm gonna cancel that one. You can also go to filters and distort and deform, which is one of my favorite ones. And there are probably some that will work, some that don't, but deform. So select that and now click and add some pins. And I'm just gonna add very quickly some pins. But the great thing about this now is when you apply it, you can see it distorts, but it distorts in a really sort of look weird, wavy sort of thing, where you, if you had it, say, filled with images, so that you might have all these ones with different images, that will form, you can make a flag or some sort of effect very easy like that. And again, click another one, let's just drag that, and you can see as you distort that, you can distort different parts, and maybe go and click here, just drag. Sometimes some of the filters, if you use them, with the incorrect tool over here. It's definitely the move tool is the best one, but you can see you can drag this and distort that, but you're distorting all the others. So you can create some truly unique distortions by using an image or anything inside multiple layers being selected. And I think that creates a more interesting effect than sometimes just a single layer being distorted. And you can also go if you want similarity. So you just try something else and you can see that one. I always like to try to. It's always a pity there's not more options there, but still click apply. And you've got that distortion now, and you can see now it's applied to all of them. And you've got different unique shapes in every single part of that now. And of course you could do, let's just undo that. I'm just gonna undo it. You could resize that. And as mentioned, you could create lots of other images here. Now other filters do work as well, but let's just go to filters and lighting. So lighting is a great one. You can see now with lighting, unfortunately it is quite slow. So if you just drag that, sometimes it doesn't respond instantaneously. I've noticed that. Sometimes it seems to be fine, but I'm just gonna drag that. So you see now, instead of lighting just being applied to that very small little one single shape, if you'd say, you could of course, another option, let's just click apply. And you can see now you've got 
the license effect applied to all of them. And then, of course, you don't have to keep them all in the same place. You could just drag them out. So you could sort of create a sort of lovely broken image with that lighting effect as well, or that warped effect. There are so many possible creative ways of doing this. And again, instead of having just obviously the color shape, you could have images in it or text in it. Maybe build up a text image with that and so on. There's so many possible combinations of things you can do. So let's just undo that and just put them all back to the same place. So you've got that. Well, of course, what you can do is you can go and play a game. You don't have to have it just once. You can always go to filters and then go down and distort, use maybe some of these, or go again to lighting. So lighting and just move this around, change the position, and you can see then you get different lighting effects then. You maybe add additional lights. And also there's other options here. Texture is quite a good one, especially if you've got, say, text or some image here. It's not so effective, particularly if you just do it with barely very much to work with. But you can see you can create some really interesting combinations. Again, it will take a few seconds to apply, but then you've got this. You can spread it out again, and you've got unique shapes and designs with your image, or you could have the same image throughout, or perhaps just select some of them. Select some of them and then go to filters and then go to apply image. Well, unfortunately, apply image is like I say, it's the one that doesn't work well with this, unfortunately. But say, let's go with half tone. It's a half tone. Go in there, get a half tone effect here. Let's just change some of these cell sizes. You can see as you do that, you've got that effect. Click apply. Then you go and select these ones and then go to filters. And go down here again, colors and halftone. And obviously, you could go with a different halftone. You don't have to go with the same. So you could resize that and then maybe contrast, screen angle, and so on. Maybe change some other things as well. And then select those. And you, you, I've repositioned them, I've moved them around. You could see you could do all kinds of different things with this filters. And again, down here to colors and again, halftone. And then Maybe go instead of this one, let's go for color there and round, or maybe go with line and so on. You could build up, maybe have the lines going horizontally. On the others, you go vertically, lines horizontal and so on, or maybe at 45 degrees. So maybe go at that angle with those. Maybe that batch there, uh, let's just select some again, just drag over them, then go to filters and again, go down to colors and go down to half tone. Unfortunately, again, it puts it back to the default, which is always annoying, but put it back to line. And then you can rotate that. And you can see then change that cell size. You can see you can create different designs from this very quickly. Combinations of all kinds of shapes and forms with filled with different designs. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. And I will be doing more videos on this subject, exploring maybe combinations of things like this halftone at different angles to see what can be achieved. Maybe using different shapes, maybe circle designs. There is literally infinite possibilities of designs with this. And of course, once you've got it, of course, you can always, let's drag that out to make it a bit bigger than that. You can see you can fill the whole screen with this. And of course, these can be moved as well. Suddenly you just thought, you know what? You can move them to create an interesting combination just by just shifting them like that. They don't have to remain in exactly the same position.